about that there's some really hot guys that go there. No, he's not gay. That's the point. Franco is... Have you enjoyed it? Lorraine, you're going to go home and you're going to sleep till 11 and then you're going to wake up and call one of your friends and have brunch. And tell her what a stud you are. I have to be at my desk in two hours. All right, Lorraine, you can't keep turning up here half-pissed in the middle of the night demanding sex. Demanding? I'll remind you of that next time you're standing to attention. And this isn't really what it looks like. Coffee? I really hope you wouldn't get me out of bed at the crack of dawn for a car accident. We don't know what it is yet. I'm off the sugar. northbound in the left lane. The accident guy said he landed, which means he jumped or someone helped him. Yeah? Yeah, I've had a look on both sides of the bridge. There's no signs of anything. No notes, nothing. Look, he may have been mugged and then thrown over. I'll keep looking around. Righto. Nothing on the bridge. Melinda Cosgrove. 19 years old. Poor kid, she wouldn't have known what hit her. This was in his pocket. He wasn't mugged. There's got to be 250 bucks in here. Brilliant. What? Is Charles Zawalski ring any bells? The journalist? You're kidding. I'd be the one telling that wife of his. You ever met her? Fetch your mum? No. Total bitch. Hmm. Someone will come and get you. You have to sign in. Thank you. So, how do you think you'll take it? Sean, tell the floor I'll be a while. I can finish myself. Petra, are you sure? Someone could sit in for you. I saw that. I will cry. I live my life in public. I deal with it in private. Do you know who killed my husband? Well, we're not sure anyone did yet. We smiled. It may have been an accident, an assault, or there is the possibility of suicide. No, not Charles. He enjoyed himself far too much. Nevertheless, it is one of the things we have to rule out. Consider it ruled out, then. My husband would not kill himself. In that case, can you think of anyone who may have had a grudge against Mr. Zawalski? <laughs> I'll have Sean draw up a list. My husband has many enemies. He's a journalist, for God's sakes. He believes in telling the truth, whatever the consequences. Can you tell us when you last saw your husband, Ms. Mild? About 7 o'clock yesterday evening. I helped tie his bow tie. He was off to a cricket team reunion. His old university 11. And he was in a perfectly cheerful frame of mind. It's Sparksy's wife. He's still in recovery. I can't help it. She comes around and she wakes me up, and then she shags me till she's had enough, and then she gets up and gets dressed and buggers off. <laughs> Come on. Mate, I love it. It's not funny, Matthew. She is killing me. She bites. <laughs> Who's this? Josh Braddock, Sarge. He, uh, he organised the reunion, Sarge. So how was he after the reunion? It was quite jolly, actually. So Mr Zawalski was inebriated too? Yeah, well, I guess. That's terrible. 
And this was the reunion of your team, right? That's right, the University 11. I organise it every year. So you and Charles were close? No, not really. In fact, quite the opposite. He wasn't much liked. Why not? Well, he never missed a reunion. He wasn't really even in the team. He was the scorer. Always had a bit of a weight problem. He got teased a bit. So why did he go to the reunions? I don't know. They're fun, I guess. So did you see him leave? Yes. In fact, I could probably save you guys some time. After the reunion, a few of us went back to a hotel. A few of you? Myself, Charles. A couple of work colleagues. So if you don't like Zawalski, why did you take him with you to party on? Well, it was my idea. I always felt bad about the way we treated him at uni, and there he was, after all this time, still hanging in there, you know? And I thought, well, this time, why not reciprocate? So who were these others? See, the thing is, uh, we work for Nortex, the merchant bank, and even a hint of a scandal could cost us our jobs. What's your point? I'm asking for a bit of discretion. We're all team leaders about to get our annual bonus. They call it envelope day. And um, we're talking a lot of money here. Discretion shouldn't be a problem, Mr. Braddock, but we still need those names. You can start with who went back to the hotel. OK, um, Paul G and uh, Jeremy, Jeremy Sands. Yes, I hire a hotel suite every year. After the restaurant, we go back there and party. It's not illegal. <laughs> no one's saying it is. What we want to know is what happened after that. Were you with Charles Lewalski when he left the hotel, Mr. Sands? All three of us were. We all quit together outside the hotel. And what time was this? Uh, around four. Charles went in one direction and we went in the other. And when you say we, who do you mean? Me, Josh and Paul, look, this is really worrying. I've got to get back to my yes, job. Yes, we've heard about Envelope Day, Mr Sands. Is that why you wanted to meet us here, Jeremy? Look, there's a lot at stake. Surely it could have been an accident or, I don't know, suicide or... Well, you'd better hope so. If he was pushed or thrown off that footbridge, then that would be murder and manslaughter. A motorist was killed by the falling body, Mr Sands. A young girl. Oh, God. Oh, God. Now, where can we find this Paul G? Chardonnay? No, thanks. Shall we call you Paul? Mr G and Paul, whatever. As long as it's not Wiz. G Wiz? It was a standing joke at uni. Hilarious. And what was Charles Zawalski called? Albert. After Fat Albert, Bill Cosby, you know? So then. You didn't like him? Not at uni, not since. Can we move this along? I've got a client arriving shortly. Business lunch, is it? Meal and deal. When did you last see Charles Lewalski? Outside the hotel. He went off to get a cab. Me, Josh and Jeremy went our own ways. Cabs too? Cars. Which was stupid, because we'd been drinking. Those RBT pricks always target the flash cars. And I drive a Porsche. So, Braddock, G and Sands were the last to see Zawalski. I drive a Porsche. <laughs> I hate these flash money market types. We work our asses off for nothing, and they sit around doing bugger all. Driving around in their Porsches. Given that opinion, I'm sure you will be happy to do thorough background checks on all of these people, right? What's happening, Sarge? Yeah, we're working with the cab companies, and we've uh, put in a request for the CCTV footage from the hotel foyer. Check this story. Mm, any credible motive surfaced? You read his column, Sarge? There'll be people lining up to chuck him off a bridge. Yeah, one thing we can't work out, if he was uh, walking off the booze after the hotel, it's not exactly a logical route. His home's in the opposite direction. He's probably too pissed to know where he was. A journalist motto, I drink, therefore I am. What is your problem with this guy? Oh, just... He was a right-wing prick. At this stage, it's wide open. OK. Let's call it a day. We'll pick it up tomorrow. See you, Sarge.
Nefze! İsmi ne? What? Fluffy you little bastard, do you know how much that bastard's worth? Stiff's name came up as a person of interest under your registered number. I thought I'd better call you. Yeah, thanks. Thanks, mate. Is that your Jeremy Sands? Yeah, that's him, more or less. We thought you should know the autopsy results have established your husband was already dead when he was thrown from the overpass. So suicide's off the agenda, is it? Do you have any idea who did it? At this stage, no. We're checking the taxi companies and doing a door knock of nearby houses. Charles embarrassed a lot of people. He made a lot of enemies. Miss Mild, if you know anything about anyone who might be involved in your husband's murder, we'll certainly investigate. And if I did, I'd certainly tell you. Sorry, I'm gonna have to take this one. Sean, I said no interruptions. What is it, Simon? Jeremy Sands has had his head bashed in. He's dead. That could be connection, or it could just be a burglary gone wrong. Thank you for the information. I appreciate it. Enlighten me, Superintendent. How is it that despite all your resources, I learn about the death of one of Charles's friends before you do? Just heard. I know what you've just heard, Stanley. She's just been rubbing my nose in it. Get this sorted out. The sooner, the better. Could just be coincidence. Unless we're working on the theory that someone out there is knocking off the members of the university cricket team. Maybe you could share your humour with the superintendent, Duncan. She's in need of a good laugh. There was nothing at Sands House to suggest it could be anything but a burglary gone wrong. Everyone from the reunion is accounted for except for Josh Braddock and Paul G. Neither of them turn up for work today and they're not at home either. No one knows where they are. No. Put wanted flags on the system for both of them and their cars. And get the local patrols to keep an eye on their arms. It's already done, Sarge. Senior Sergeant, I've got a Melinda Cosgrove's parents out here. Melinda Cosgrove? The girl who was driving the car when your victim took his swan dive. Ah, probably wondering how the investigation's going. I know exactly how they feel. Whoever did the death message, can't speak to them, please. Someone did do the death knock. Mr. and Mrs. Cosgrove, this is Detective Senior Sergeant Wolf. We've been looking for our daughter. They said to come here. What's going on? Look, if you'd care to uh, come to my office. Thank you. This is terrible. I thought the Divisional D was doing it. Same here. to be given prior notice, it's me, Lorraine. I'm on my way over. We need to talk.
Mm. Thanks, Mum. You staying over again tonight? I'm here now, might as well. I'll make up the bed. Again. Thanks, Mum. Third time in two weeks you've crashed here. Mrs. D? Oh, come on, tell us. You're hiding from someone. Some woman, you mean? <laughs> hey, how's that partner of yours, Duncan? Lonely. He split up with his fiance. His suits aren't so well pressed now. Well, I could press him for him. Mm. Okay, before I could even consider you and Duncan getting together, I'd first have to tie him up and emasculate him with a whippersnapper. Well, she's not interested in him like that. Oh, good. She's interested in his girlfriend. Is there something you want to tell me, little sis? <sighs> she's a fashion buyer. I'm just so sick of being in sales. I know more about clothes than half the buyers in the store, and I'm all I told you they split up. It's bad luck. Hey, can you turn this up? It's one of our homicides. Don't change the subject. I'm not. I'm not. We're investigating his murder. So <sighs> many reporters, my husband trod on toes. The snail's pace of the investigation into his death may seem to indicate that some of those toes are wearing police issue boots. It's a well-known fact, for instance, that my husband had personal issues with one of the detectives investigating his death. Detective Senior Constable Simon Joyner assaulted my husband at his newspaper offices two years ago after he published an article about this woman. The detective's younger sister, a thief, arrested for shoplifting. Caroline Joyner was a thief. Caroline! We got blindsided, Wolf. And now we all look like idiots. Detective Joyner admitted to punching Zawalski, sir, but it happened two and a half years ago. He wasn't even in the homicide squad. And that makes a difference because? Personally, I think he had every right to take exception. The man published a half-page picture of a 16-year-old girl charged with a minor offence. Oh, hang on. I'm missing something here, am I? Joyner wasn't a police officer at the time? Oh. He was what, a bouncer, a boxer, a bloody standover man? What? He was a bloody police officer. And he won't be one for much longer if I have anything to do with it. I think the association might have a few things to say about that, sir, with all due respect. You want to show me some respect, Wolf? Stop playing the party card and get your junior wild bunch out there doing their jobs. I want Charles Zawalski's murderer caught and locked up, or that media witch is going to make our lives a misery. Now bugger off out of here so I don't have to embarrass Bernice by reading her out in front of a subordinate. He's right about the association, Bill. They'd be all over you like a rash. I'll buy some liniment. It's all history. He didn't even press charges after I thumped him because he knew he'd overstepped the mark. A crappy little blouse. That's all she took, you know? A 16-year-old girl makes a mistake. What kind of person publishes a photo like that? He's no white knight crusading reporter. The guy's a prick. A dead one. I don't like being blindsided, Simon. You can leave the investigation to the others for now. And do what, Sarge? Coro. Hmm? Desk work till it goes away. Sarge? Uh, anything on G and Braddock? No, nothing, Sarge. We've rang every car hire, called all their families. It's... Sorry to interrupt. Some good news this time. Well, well, well. You look a little agitated, Mr. Braddock. Look, I'm scared. I know I lied. I'm sorry. It's only because. Look, I went to Jeremy's this morning. Uh, to talk about everything, tell him we should come clean, and uh, well, I saw all the forensic people everywhere. He's dead, isn't he, Jeremy? He was found this morning. He'd been attacked. He was dead. Is there something you can tell us about that? Okay. After the reunion, we went back to the hotel suite. Zawalski, Jeremy Sands, Paul G, and yourself. That's right. No, I was lying on the bed. And I was pretty drunk, but I saw Paul follow Charles into the bathroom. I can't say how much later, but I saw Paul come out. Oh, he was white as a sheet. He said Charles has been hurt. So, we go into the bathroom. Charles has hit his head on the side of the bath. There's blood. He's dead. He's actually dead. Go on, Mr. Bradley. Where are you going? Get crime scene to the hotel suite. Hopefully the cleaners missed something. Good luck with that. So what did you do next? What happened? Well, the plan was um, get him through the foyer, prop him up like he's drunk, put him in the back of Jeremy's car, take him out and dump him. But I couldn't do it. I chickened out. Well, that was too much at stake. I just couldn't do it. 
What do you mean too much at stake? Share entitlements, cash payouts, you run a section, you do well, you're talking big money. Always comes down to the same bloody thing, the moolah. Simon, what are you doing? You know you're not meant to be in here. So, Mr. Braddock, apart from losing your money, what else are you scared of? I went to Paul's house this morning before I went to Jeremy's. Paul's gone. I couldn't raise him on his mobile. Then when I went to Jeremy's, I saw all those forensics everywhere. I started thinking, what if it wasn't an accident in the bathroom? What if Paul and Charles had a fight? Paul's a fierce competitor. I think Paul killed Jeremy, and I'm scared that I'll be next. Uniforms are gonna do hourly checks on him after they've dropped him home. We do not want another body in the mall doing. How'd you go at the hotel? Yeah, well, the uh, cleaners had been through Duncan, but uh, the crime scene guys still found traces of blood in the hotel suite's bathroom. Hmm? It's being analyzed. What about the CCTV footage from the foyer? Yeah, it checks out. Two men supporting a drunk guy. Uh, it's being enhanced, but uh, it's already pretty clear. Paul G and Jeremy Sands with Zawalski. Mm, so the story checks out. Any news on G? No, Sarge. It's probably already in the Bahamas. His envelope. Well, when is he going to be back? It could be an hour or two. Well, I've rung him three times already. I understand, the... Mr Cosgrove. What Excuse me. Are you Sergeant Wolf's detectives? Mr Cosgrove, isn't it? Are you even interested in what happened to my girl? Sir. All I see on TV is stuff about the Zawalski character. What is it? Melinda's not worth the attention. All you're interested in is chasing headlines. That's not true, sir. We find whoever killed Zawalski, we find the person responsible for the death of your daughter. It's that simple. I just want a face to put to what happened. Something to hate. We have three possible suspects. One of them's dead. Yeah, saw that on the news. So one of the others did it, did they? We don't know. But we're going to find out. So perhaps you should go home, Sarah, and trust us to do that. OK? <coughs> sorry. I'm sorry. What are you doing here? Well, haven't you got my messages? Well, it's Caroline. She's been sacked from a job. What? They can't do that. They fired her. They said they didn't need that kind of publicity. Well, well can't Robert do something? He's a lawyer. What? Well, you want my husband to fix up your mess? You fix it up, Simon. What's the point of being a copper if you can't fix these things up? There's nothing I can do. I've got enough on my plate. And not just at work. Yeah, I thought as much. Mm. Why are you spending so much time over at Mum's? No, come on, Si. What is going on? You have 12 new messages. It's me again. Will you please answer my messages? We really need to talk. Sarge? Simon. Am I still on Coro? Mm-hmm. Over something that happened two and a half years ago. That is correct. You know, I think that's almost as unfair as my little sister getting the sack because all this crap got dredged up. I tell you, if Zawalski was still alive, I would happily give him another phone. Hmm, she got sacked. That wanted flag paid off. Gee whiz has been picked up at the bus depot. Stanley, you ready? Ah, oh, man, uh, that meeting with petrol. Don't out. even think about trying to get out of it. My Holland said I have to go, that means you as well. Yeah, I wonder if we could put it off for a while. Why do that? It's like going to the dentist, get it over with. Paul G has been located. Oh. You think you can get a confession out of him? Give me the time, yes, I can. Change the appointment. I'd prefer to go there with it sold. See if she puts that on a pathetic program. Couldn't afford a plane ticket, Paul. I thought you guys were millionaires. Look, I was just trying to get back to Sydney incognito, OK? Actually, mate, that's called doing a runner. <laughs> what happened? After you beat Sands to death, you couldn't find Josh Braddock to do him as well, so you decided to make a run for it. What? Jeremy's dead too. Don't look so surprised, Paul. Josh Braddock told us what happened in that hotel. Everything. Now we want to hear it from your mouth. I don't know exactly what happened. 
It started in the bathroom. Yes. Between you and Zawalski. No, between Zawalski and Josh. That's not what Josh told us. It's true. It wasn't me. Josh must have done it. He killed Jeremy. It's lucky he killed Charles. Two suspects. Hmm, both telling the same story about each other. And you delayed our meeting in order to tell me this. Wouldn't your time be better spent trying to figure out which one's lying? Well, perhaps it would help if we had a better understanding of your husband's reasons for going on to the hotel after the reunion. I don't know why he went. What do you know, Miss Mild? Surely you and your husband talked. He said there was a story. Something he was investigating. He had the goods on someone there, he said. What was the story? Charles liked to keep things to himself. But <laughs> all that grief they gave him over the years, I think he was planning on enjoying the reunion even more than usual. Get his own back. And you didn't think to tell us this before? I don't care for your tone, Superintendent. It's your job to find my husband's killer, not mine. I'll tell you why she didn't mention the story before. She was protecting her own story opportunity. What, off the back of a dead husband? Oh, I mean, I wouldn't put a past to him, right? Yeah, well, according to the gossip magazines, if they're true, it was a poisonous marriage. So, all we have to do is find out what Zawalski's hot story was, who's involved, and we'll know who's lying. In the meantime, I'm going to have to let them go. They're both claiming to be innocent. I can't prove otherwise. Superintendent... Have you seen this nonsense? What nonsense would that be, Bill? That media cow previewing her next special on her toy boy bloody hug. I'll switch the bloody box off! The news review exclusive. We reveal murdered journalist Charles Zawalski was investigating the mystery fire that destroyed these heritage homes. Tonight we have footage of that blaze. I'll also be asking the obvious question. How is it possible for this program to uncover the facts when the police are apparently completely unable to do so? Who does she think she is? Does she think she's above the law? We need to get hold of Zawalski's computer. Well, I'll give you three guesses where that is, and you'll only need one. You can't take that. Using it, were you? It's my husband's personal property. It's evidence. Read the warrant. Tell Superintendent Waverley I'll be dropping by in the morning with my lawyers. Let's get right to the point. Good. Economy of style. We like that. James? This meeting is being recorded for legal purposes. Your lawyers will be furnished with a DVD of proceedings at the conclusion of the meeting. I will not be intimidated into silence. The public have a right to know. So do we, Miss Mild. And right now, I could charge you with withhold information obstruct justice and reckless endangerment. What reckless endangerment? We have here a copy of a press release that we're going to issue immediately unless you tell us everything you know about your husband's so-called story now. I told everything I know last night on national television. Having told us, you had no idea about what your husband's story was about. Precisely. We were putting together the story at the time. <laughs> Rubbish. We know how journalism works, Miss Mild. We deal with you people all the time. I'm sure, for instance, that your rivals would pounce on that press release. They love it when the opposition's credibility and integrity is called into question. Quite properly in this case. You were about to ask what reckless endangerment. Simple. You put someone's life in danger with last night's broadcast. Now that is rubbish. Is it? A row of houses in Kew were bought by a shelf company. However, due diligence was not performed, and when it was revealed that those houses were heritage listed, plans to build apartment towers had to be put on hold. Fair summary of my report? Some of it. According to the notes on your husband's computer, he'd discovered that the shelf company was a front. Hmm. Linked by nefarious means to a certain merchant bank. And the person who screwed up the development deal was then a junior at that bank. And still works there today. Look, I said all this last night. Your husband doesn't name the bank. As you know, having taken his computer... We seized evidence. We can all work out the name of the bank anyway, can't we? Noratex. Didn't dare say that on air, did you? Now, that would have been stupid. 
Almost as stupid as the unnamed employee who tried to cover his lack of diligence by paying an arsonist to destroy the houses so the development plans could go ahead. Which it did. So, the only remaining link between our bungling banker and his bosses at Noritex is the arsonist. Logically. Last night you said, and I quote, we believe we, believe we, know. we know who the arsonist is and we'll soon be putting together the final pieces of the jigsaw of money and murder. A jigsaw which led to the death of my husband, Charles Zawaski. Not a teleprompter in sight. The arsonist's identity isn't on your husband's computer, but you claimed on air to know who it is. Yes, I did. Tell us who it is then, or I will have you arrested for withholding information. He can't because I'm not withholding any information. Do you honestly believe I know who the arsonist is? It was a ploy to smoke him out. <laughs> no pun intended. And that is reckless endangerment. You've set this person up as a sacrificial lamb, hoping your husband's murderer will go after him. You're lucky I don't charge you regardless. This meeting is terminated. And now that we're off the record, Pull your head in, Petra. Let us do our job. It's got sexual don't fuss. Um, as mild, I was wondering if I could have a word. In, um, in private, I wanted to ask a favour. I wonder if you'd be able to use your influence to address the problems that Caroline Joyner is having at the moment. Caroline Joyner, never heard of her. She's the sister of uh, one of my team. Oh, yes. The thief. Well, since her face was plastered all over the television, she's been fired from her job. I was hoping you might be able to use your position to help her out. Frosty day in hell, Wolf. It doesn't have to be broadcast. I, <clears throat> I was thinking more a discreet phone call to her employer. Ms. Mild, your husband was always very critical of the police and in many ways his criticisms were valid. This place is rife with politics, rorts and press leaks. That's the thing I hate the most, press leaks. Coast all clear? Hmm. Well, we can only hope she's done us a favour with her sacrificial lamb. If Jim and Braddy go after the arsonist, we'll be there. We've already got them under surveillance. I'd expect nothing less. Yeah. Yeah, okay, mate. I'll talk to you later. Duncan's guy's having lunch. What about your guy? Coffee. How'd the meeting go? Waverly nailed her. Beautiful to watch. Oh, he's on the move. So are we. Thanks. Can you call Senior Sergeant Wolf and give him all this information too? The business belongs to Victor Bingley. He's got priors for a range of different stuff, uh, dating back to the 60s. I spent some time inside. It's been clean since 93. When the houses burnt down? Yeah. OK, here we go.
You might be able to talk your way out of this, Braddock. Vic Bingley's done an immunity deal in exchange for which he's told us it was you who paid him to burn down the houses in 93. Nice fee. Enabled him to go straight by his little business. If you guys are recording, it's all inadmissible. As my lawyer will no doubt point out when she gets here. She's the best. Yes, that ever's envelope there. And I'm four million dollars richer. We don't have to say anything. We're just chatting while we wait for your very highly paid mouthpiece. Still, it was a very good idea keeping track of Bingley all those years. Insurance? Mm. Yeah, you must have felt pretty secure until Zawalski found out about your dirty little secret. What happened? He couldn't help himself. Uh, told you what he was going to do, then fronted you with it in that bathroom. He wanted you to beg him not to run the story. He would have enjoyed that. Oh, you people are so stupid. You really don't have the first idea, do you? It wasn't about Zawalski running the story at all. Now, I would have panicked too. Kill him, oh, then use my best mates to set up an alibi. Yeah, that was good. Get them to drag the body through the foyer while he sneaks off to get the car. Gave him a fallback position if things went wrong. Which they did. Because uh, when his mate, Jeremy, found out that the girl on the freeway had been killed too, he got scared, didn't he? Looked like he might buckle. So you had to knock him off too? All to protect your payday. What do you get in your envelope, detective? Satisfaction at watching slime like you go down the gurgler. Me. What about Zabowski? Blackmail. Oh, greedy fat. Anyway, I won't be going down the gurgler. I've got more than a good lawyer to work with. What's he got up his sleeves, eh? Excuse me, you can't come in. Sorry to interrupt. Look, if this is about that girl, no, I've no, already... No, no, no, no. I know you're going to air shortly, and uh, I have some important information for you. We have it on very good authority that your husband's story was for sale. For sale? I don't understand. He told Braddock he'd kill the story for a price. A million dollars. That's why he was killed. The public has a right to know, as you said. Yes, I did. And they will. Regardless. Oh, yes, we've already issued a media release. I hope you weren't expecting an exclusive. Whatever you did, it worked. Caroline got a job back. Well, hey, what are Big Brothers for? Well, she told them to stick it anyway. Reckons they don't appreciate her talents. Mm. I'm Celia, Simon's sister, and you're Lorraine Sparks. Is um, Simon here? Uh, no, no, he's not. Right, well, um, can you give him that for me, please? Uh, there's no point, Lorraine. He doesn't want to see you anymore. Just give that to him, please. Well, I'm a little disappointed. What happened to the tears and hysteria that you promised? She can't do that. What? She's dumping me. Oh. Senior Sergeant Wolf. Ah. Stanley. Hmm. Did you happen to catch Miss Miles' program last night? Not a mention of the case. Pulled her head right in. Mm, game, set and match. <laughs> Thank you, ball boys. What's this? Envelope day for the Cosgroves from Braddock. His lawyers asked it to be passed on. Evidently, he is deeply remorseful for what happened to their daughter. Really? Well, I suppose we're obliged to pass it on then, aren't we? A lot of money. Does this Braddock character think this makes up for the death of our daughter? 
And some brownie points with the judge, I think. That's the idea. Money won't bring her back. Thank you for coming today. Come on, love. We've got a funeral to go to.